Hello everyone, I'm Liz from Elizabeth Street Studio. Welcome to the Studio Notes podcast. Uh, it's been a few weeks since the last episode and I have some fun little updates and things to share. And the Christmas tree is up, so it's feeling a little extra cozy. So I thought I would sit down and record a new episode to share. Um, I think the last time I recorded, I was wearing my feather and fern sweater it's back on the needles <laughs> i so i wore it a few times like since the last podcast episode and i it was just a little bit too cropped for me so you can see i'm just adding a few extra rows or a few extra inches of body and then bringing the ribbing back. I was really impatient to get that done <laughs> and be able to wear it again. And I unraveled the yarn and then just started re-knitting right away and that did not work. Um, I tried to skip like steaming out the yarn after unraveling it. That did not work. Just one block I blocked. So I knit it, blocked it, hoping that would undo all of the kinks in the yarn that did not work it was not successful so i ended up ripping it out so i'm doing this for the second time now i should have just done it right to begin with but i'm just really excited to wear this because it's so cozy it's actually too warm to wear to my office like area where i work um i'm a librarian I work as a librarian full time and in our office workspace area it is too warm to wear a sweater like I wore it once and I was like sweating <laughs> it was just too warm you're like up and down and our heating system is a little weird so eh, it just it didn't work out but like in the evenings I it's much cooler in my home to pay for heating you know so um, that can get expensive in Wisconsin in the winter time so this is going to be really cozy to curl up with in the evenings, but I have a little bit left to go on the ribbing and then I'll bind that off again. I'll block it and we'll try that and see if adding that little bit of length to the body will make it a little bit easier to wear. It was just a little bit too short for like pants. I thought I had more like dresses and skirts. I really don't have any skirts and dresses. I'm like, hmm. The dresses I've been wearing are like full length and that, I don't know, it just didn't look these, the full length skirt and this just didn't quite work out. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to add some length to this. Um, cause I know I'll wear the pants, jeans, I'm gonna wear that. No problem. I may also, I'm debating whether or not to re-knit the sleeves because I actually knit them in sevens instead of eights forgot to change or I picked up the wrong pair of needles um and the sleeves are just a tad snug like I don't know I'll have to try <laughs> I'll have to, it was enough that I redid the hemband I'll try wearing it again a couple times to see um if the sleeves are still too snug um but that's the beauty of knitting is you can if you decide like a year down the road, you know what, I'm gonna change this, you can. So I'm doing a few edits on my feather and fern sweater. <laughs> I like already started the yoke of, I think it's Silver Lining, um, which is also by uh, Knit Love Wool, who designed this pattern. And I already started that and I was like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta fix my other one first. <laughs> so I still have, the silver lining and I think now that I've had time to think about it I actually have some other yarns in mind um but I'll show you that when I get there when I get there um I've had like cast on itis uh since in like between the last episode I recorded on this one I wanted to cast on all the things I was in the middle of a few projects that were for um an ebook um, kind of project that I was working on for next year 
um, and I needed, I was waiting for yarn, so I was kind of at a stopping point. And of course, while I was waiting for yarn, you obviously can't just sit and wait, you have to cast on something else. So I decided to knit <laughs> an underwing mitt. Um, I have to start the second one, but I finished the first one. I've had this pattern sitting in my stash and yarn picked out for like almost this whole year and just have never picked it up. This actually went surprisingly fast. I love wearing mitts. Um, ugh, I love knitting accessories is just so good because you can get a feel for it. If you mess up, it doesn't take that long to figure it out and then either start over or you just knit the second one in the correct way and then you go back and fix it. Like they're just such a great way to like learn new things and try out new yarns. I just love them so much. So the duplicate stitch is totally, was totally new to me. It took me an embarrassing number of tries to get that correct. I don't know what it was, but I'd like, maybe it's just the yarn or like, because you're knitting on top of other stitches, it was so much harder than I thought it would be. But I, I'm, uh, the results turned out well, actually blocking really helped because I did the duplicate stitch before blocking. I finished it, um, you know, tried it on to make sure it was, it would fit. I didn't do a gauge swatch. I didn't, I didn't swatch for this. <laughs> um, I had used this yarn in, this is Nitpicks palette and I had just used that for some other color projects. So I was pretty confident about that I could get a gauge that would work. Um, and I think pretty sure this pattern is one size. It's sitting over there. I, yeah, I think it's one size. There are multiple sizes, but um, this is Underwing Mitts. Um, I can't remember the name of the center. I think her first name is Erica. Anyway, it's a really popular one. I follow the Underwing Mitt hashtag. So every once in a while I see another beautiful pair pop up and I'm like, oh, I need to do mine. I need to do mine. So um, I love that the front side and the back side both have uh, like a graphic pattern to them. I think that's really fantastic. And the thumb just looks so cool. I, I always have a hard time figuring out how that's gonna look, but it looks really, really cool. And it's easy to catch your floats and everything. I always, I knit in um, uh, with Magic Loop. Um, so I don't use double pointed needles. I, find them way too. I get too many gaps and it gets really clunky for me. Um, and so sometimes I have it's, I have to pay really close extra attention to the where my beginning of the round is just so there's not a gap there but this was easy so that it had it was a single color so I really like how these this first mitt turned out. The moon phase little motif along the bottom might be my favorite part. <laughs> it's just really cute. These actually went, or this mitt actually went pretty fast um, for having a lot of color work and really having to pay attention to the chart. Um, it went pretty fast. So I have to cast on the second one yet. I'm not sure when I'm gonna do that. And I still need to weave in all the ends, but it was too exciting to wear and show off. The contrast color yarn, I'm wondering if it's maybe not quite as contrasty as I was thinking it would be, but that's okay. It's a little bit of hedgehog fibers, uh, like a hand dyed skein. So you can see like, you can see how much variation there is even just here. Um, I have a few scraps left from something else, um, but that's okay. They still look really pretty. Even if you did it without that uh, duplicate stitching. So I worked on that while I was waiting for yarn to arrive. Um, and let's see, I am still working on this colorwork cowl. Speaking of Knit Picks, actually this was Knit Picks palette and so is this. Um, I made some definite progress on this guy. I still don't have a name for this one yet. But this is gonna be a cowl um, and I'm going to twist it before joining it so it has a nice twist in the front. I think that looks really nice. Um, this is about two thirds done. 
So from here to this marker, this is one uh, chart to repeat. So I've done two and I ran out of the main color. So I just got a new skein of that in the mail and I need to knit one more section before joining in the round. Look how cozy and pretty that's gonna be. Oh, it's gonna be so good. That's gonna be so good. Um, so I wanted to have enough length to give it that nice twist so that's not really, really tight. Um, Cause that takes, that adding that twist takes up some length. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how that's looking. I really like that visual rhythm that's coming up with the larger and the smaller. I think that looks really nice. And it's going to stand out while you're wearing it. It's not just going to blend in and get lost, I think. So I really like how this is coming along. Um, I have enough yarn to finish this now. The other, um, so the, the project that this is a part of, um, I think I'm going to call it Wintering. And this is going to be volume one. Um, I think my idea is to each winter design some like two or three of the same item like this year it's three different cowls you know one year you could do mittens one year you could do hats and you know you could do play on that a lot of different ways um but this year is going to be three different cowls in one ebook so it's sort of a mini collection called wintering volume one um so this is one of the designs that's going to be in that project. Another one is a nice cabled cowl and I started that. So there's some nice yummy cables. I like how these are looking a lot. I cannot wait to block that. Ooh, look how nice that's going to look. Um, got like super simple, some I-cord edging, uh, like three sections, one, two, three sections of this cable where they there's three actual like cable lines and they all kind of twist back and forth um this is actually from the Nora Gon cable book cable source book knitting cable source book I think it's called I think that's what it's called um it's actually it's sitting on the table over there <laughs> but this was a motif from that book um and so this one is going to be um provisional cast line just keep knitting 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 and then I'll join in the round when it's done um and then it's going to be worn this direction so and I think this one's going to be long enough to wrap around to loop twice so it'll be long enough to go around three times so I want it to be really cozy and this is um Barrett Wool Co home their worsted weight I really like their yarns um and this is the stationary colorway, a really nice kind of off-white or like vintagey white. And like, it's just a good neutral. It's not too bright white and it's not a gray. Um, it's a really nice, just neutral that can go with anything. Um, this is a really, really lovely yarn. Like look how good those cables look so far and you haven't even blocked it yet gonna look really good it's um a really round bouncy yarn you can kind of see all the plies in there uh this is produced in the u.s it's not their wisconsin yarn um barrett wool co is it's susan b anderson's wool company and um they are based in wisconsin so i like i love using their yarn because there's not um, I don't know of any other like Wisconsin based brands. I don't know. Maybe there's someone I just don't realize, but I love that they're in my state and I love that they're a small business and they're kind of local to me. So this is the home worsted weight. Um, I've used their fingering weight before and it's really, really lovely. Um, I have not used their Wisconsin woolen spun yet, but I would like to try that as well. Um, this was just a little bit more, I was looking for the more applied, a little bit smoother for the cables for this project. So this is going to work, work up and look really, really nice. So I've only got a few repeats done of this just so I could 
figure out some of the mathy things. Um, but I'm going to block this pretty soon. I might finish this repeat that I'm on because um, the repeat is actually pretty small. So you do this and this and this and this and like from my finger down, that's like one pattern repeat. Um, so you're going to do that a whole lot of times. Um, but I think it's going to be kind of re re um, repetitious but it'll have a rhythm to it like I don't think you'll have to like look back at your chart once you get going once you do the first few repeats you can probably this could be good Netflix knitting for sure or travel knitting um if it's you know you're still traveling over the winter or whatever but I have this going um this is going to be part of that same wintering mini collection and then I have the yarn for the last um for the last cowl look how yummy that color is look at that it's even it's a little bit twee like you can't i didn't notice that in the photos but um this is cyrano and it's in the what's the name of the colorway i think it's it's not a g uh, let's see if i can find it Jeanne. it's french wool um it's uh ugh. Dirirum Natura. Oh my gosh, I'm sure I'm like butchering that because I don't know how to speak French. Um, there you go. Can you read that? <laughs> it's probably, it is backwards too, probably. Um, but I'll link whatever I chat about, I try to link in the description so that you can actually go see it and um, see it and hear about it other than me. But this I've used, um, oh, I can't remember now, one of the lighter weights of their yarn and it was really nice. So I wanted to try, this is like their Aran weight, um, Aran weight French wool. Um, it feels very, um, it feels much more rustic, um, but I, I love the color. It's really like round too. Um, and this yarn I'm going to use for a, I can't remember if I showed you the swatch. It's actually way back by my computer. Um, but it's going to be kind of an Aran weight cowl that is lace. Um, I love playing around with different, um, uh, the scale, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I wanted to try a heavier weight yarn and like, make the scale of the lace pattern a little bit bigger and to play around with that. So I'm excited to get this one going. I don't know if I should cast that on yet. <laughs> I think I need to finish something else before I cast that on. Um, but I think this one is actually gonna go really fast because it is a Aran weight. Um, it's gonna go pretty quick and it's, the chart is like you knit the chart once and there you go with a little bit of ribbing on each end. Um, and I found a nice, a good trick to getting your one by one ribbing to not be so spread out. I found it on Instagram. I have to share that again. I don't remember who gave that tip, but I tried it out with this on, a, on the swatch and it worked like a charm. So I'm gonna make a note of that because my ribbing always tends to be a little bit messy. The one by one ribbing can get a little bit messy depending on the project and the yarn sometimes it can just those knit stitches just get spread out but this trick kept it nice and tidy and it looked more like knitting knit one through the back than a regular knit one which i like how tidy knitting through the back looks but i can't do it for too long because it like it kind of kills my hands um but yeah i'm excited to see how this one turns out um i don't have a name nope that's a lie i have a name for this one this the lace cowl is going to be winter sweet which is why i picked this color because winter sweet the plant is actually like a yellow plant which so i love that so i'm gonna play on that so this is winter sweet um but i don't have names yet i don't think i have names yet for either of these uh this one is the chart is actually the same chart as the Wilder Woods hat that I published earlier this year. 
So, and there's a pair of, there's the Wilder mitts and the Wilder Woods hat. So maybe some kind of play on Wilder, I don't know, something, not quite sure yet, but, um, so these three are going to be the wintering volume one. So I'm excited to, I think the patterns are like almost ready for tech editing. Um, I am not good at writing a pattern before actually knitting it. Like I don't, I'm not one of those designers who can do that all the time. Like something like this, I can totally, you know, I can visualize and be like, yep, that's gonna work. I can get the meat of it down, you know, but yarn requirements and all that stuff, I'm not awesome at yet. I'm not awesome yet at um, estimating all of that. But I mean, I think these would be at least be ready. You could easily test knit it with a, an estimated amount of yarn. So these are the design pieces that I am working on currently. And I'm really happy with how things are going so far. I just need to focus. <laughs> But that's kind of always a problem with knitting. It's always a balance between, all right, let's focus and get something out versus just enjoying the process. So that's where Wintering Volume 1 is at right now. The other thing I wanted to chat about today was some ideas for gift knitting. I know it's like December 4, I think, when I'm recording this. Most knitters probably, you probably already have your plans for Christmas knitting done. But just in case, I did a actually a blog post a couple of a week or two ago. Um, and I was like, this would be great to include in a podcast because I'm a visual person. I need to see everything in front of me, especially when it comes to knitting. I want to see what it's going to look like um, before I start to invest all that time and effort into it. Um, and since we were talking about underwing mitts, this was actually, this pattern was actually one of my suggestions for gift knitting. Um, this, like this one knit up so fast. I think I knit this up probably in about a week. Um, I mean, and I only knit in the evenings for maybe an hour, um, you know, cause I work full time and you know, by the time you get home and make dinner and you know, all the regular stuff, um, I don't knit. I, not an extended amount of time in the evenings, honestly. So this knit up really fast and it looks super impressive. Like if you've done any, even if you've knit like one other color work thing, you could totally handle this. It's just, it's only two colors. Um, it's fingering weight. So you don't need to buy big skeins. I knit this up in Knit Picks palette. So that's really budget friendly and you get a really nice result. So this was on, this is on my list of patterns for gift knitting. Um, the other kind of hand accessory are the bracken mitts. There's there's mittens and there's mitts. These are the bracken mittens, obviously. Um, actually, either pattern would probably work really well because um, they have the same cable pattern and there is no thumb gusset because look at how the cables go and you can just pick up the stitches and knit the thumb like that. Isn't that fantastic? I love that. Um, the pair that I knit for myself is a little bit snug. I probably would have gone up a needle size. Again, I did not swatch because I'm impatient. Um, but if I probably would have swatched, I would have maybe gone up a needle size just to have a little bit more space in this area since there isn't a thumb gusset. Uh, but I knit this pair for myself probably a couple years ago now. Um, it looks like there's almost nowhere. This is uh, Quince and Co. Whatever their worst it is, I can't remember right now. It's uh, it went out of my head. Um, but this is the Honey colorway. They have beautiful colorways. They're another really great choice for high quality but also budget friendly yarn. Um, so the Bracken mittens. Um, there is, oh, and I think, did I already say there was a, I think there's a mitt pattern too that's the same cables and same style. I might have said that already. <laughs> um, but the Bracken mittens, I love those. I wear these constantly. I also knit a pair, I think it was for my mom a couple of years ago, and they turned out really well. So these are another great gift knit. And again, it's the same cable pattern over and over, and there's not even any increasing on this one. Um, the only extra thing is the thumb 
these would go really, really fast. That's another choice for gift knitting. Um, another one of my patterns, this one's actually been out for a long time. This is the Harvest Cowl. This is also done, actually this was, pub, or this was a design published by Quince. So this is for Quince and this is obviously in their yarn too, but this is also the honey colorway. Um, but it has really easy texture, like the little, little triangles. Just knitting and purling. Um, and even the edges, that's just a couple of rows of purling, not even garter technically. Um, but this is a really easy one to wear too. It wraps around twice. There you go. Um, and it looks good right side and wrong side because it's just knit and pearls. Um, and this one is on, you can buy it through, it's still on the Quince website. And this is also on my own website. I can sell it on my website now too. This is a really easy pattern, especially if you're a newer knitter and you want something that's easy. Um, this would be a really good choice for that. And then the last, okay, there's two more. And the second to last is the Wilder Mitts, which I mentioned before. And I actually left them in a pocket in a jacket at work. <laughs> so I'll try and add a photo of them here. But the Wilder Mitts, that would be another great choice. It's also color work. Um, it uses three colors, but you only use two colors at a time. So you just switch out that last color. Um, so they look a lot more impressive. Um, it's not any harder. Um, if you've, again, if you've done any color work before, you could absolutely do these mitts. Um, they're super cute. Um, they probably come up to like here rather than like this. The underwing mitts go up a little further. The wilder mitts, probably are a little bit more like that and this part around your wrist is shorter so they go from like here to like maybe here so they're a little bit smaller so that would also go a little faster um but they look really cute you can choose the your favorite colors of the person you're making them for and they look really really adorable so i'll add a photo of the wilder mitts and the last one is i think it's from tin can knits and it is, I think it's called the world's simplest or world's easiest or world's simplest um, mitten pattern. But it's just, and I think it's free. It's a free pattern. I use this pattern to knit a couple of pairs of mittens for my niece and nephew. Uh, you know, they need a different size every six months. <laughs> you know, so uh, I've knit, I think I've knit that a couple of times for them. Um, you can customize it. It's super duper easy. It's just a straight stockinette mitten in a ton of different sizes. So from like kids, really small kids up into like adult large, they've got a ton of different sizes. Um, I think you can even use different gauges of yarn too. So it's super customizable. Um, so that's a great way to use up scraps. I, one of the versions that I did was like a color block version. So I used a different color in the hand or finger section and versus the hand section. Um, they're like cute, like color dipped mittens. There's tons of different ways you could customize that, but that would be a really, really easy one. You could definitely get that done in time for Christmas yet. So there's a few options for you if you need some gift knitting ideas, <laughs> um, some of my own patterns, some patterns that I've knit that I've really, really enjoyed. Um, I wanted to be really picky about gift knitting after all that, <laughs> um, especially if it's for kids. Um, like knit it for someone who will enjoy it <laughs> and appreciate the work that goes into it um, because it is a lot more effort to make something than purchase something. And there's, there are so many good small businesses and, you know, like local artists and stuff you can uh, support if you want to do it that way. So it's a total toss up for me sometimes where I want to put my effort. And lately it's just been, I'm going to find a small business and buy something that person will love because I <laughs> knit for myself a lot. Um, but I know the work that goes into it and I really enjoy it. So no shame there, no shame, but there's a few ideas for you. If you want some gift knits or if you need something really simple, like for around the holidays, like de-stress and you know, everything, or if you're traveling, Actually, any of these will make good travel projects too. So that's a little bit 
um, some more patterns to share, projects and everything. Hope you have a lovely rest of December. I hope you feel cozy and uh, warm in your homes and enjoy some knitting while the cold weather kind of sinks in and we get into winter. Knitting always makes winter better. So that's about all I have for this episode today, guys. Um, any questions, comments, leave them below. I'll put all of the links for the patterns and yarns I mentioned in the description box. Um, also, make sure to sign up for my newsletter. I have a separate test knitting newsletter and then a regular newsletter where I send up, you know, off, so every so often a little studio update or, um, you know, a new pattern release. That's the best place for that. But if you'd like information on the test knitting, especially with um, these guys kind of in the works, these cowls and the wintering volume one in the works. Um, if you are interested in test knitting any of those, make sure to drop your email in on that one. And those are all on my website, which I will link below. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So thanks for watching and listening and happy knitting. We'll see you soon.